Go into a science or engineering laboratory, close your eyes, and listen. In a biomedical lab, you might hear an ultra centrifuge revving up as it separates the components of a sample. In a missile propulsion research facility, you might hear the aggressive white noise from a test burn of a new experimental jet fuel. In a computer simulation center, you might hear the hum from a veritable orchestra of cooling fans. In each setting, you can hear a sonic fingerprint of what goes on there. Welcome back to Sounds of Innovation, a feature of our Voices from DARPA podcast. My name is Ivan Amato, and I'm your DARPA host. In each Sounds of Innovation feature, you will hear some of the soundscapes of research and development in the moments they are happening, and learn just a little bit about what new capabilities those sounds could make so. My thanks go to the DARPA program managers and their teams, as well as to the research performers working under contract for those teams for help in harvesting the sounds you are about to hear. In each case, I first will play the sound without telling you what it is. As you listen, try to guess where the sound comes from. Then I will tell you. All right, here we go. Let me give you a few hints about these first two sound clips. One hint is that they come from researchers working on DARPA's Persistent Aquatic Living Sensors Program, or PALS. Another hint is that you are not about to hear recordings of big fat raindrops slamming onto a tin roof. Now for the second clip. It sounds a little sad. What is common to both of those clips is the riot of crackling noises. They derive from a real-life superpower wielded by a common, comedic, and widespread sea creature known as snapping shrimp. Turns out that these two-centimeter crustaceans have some specialized claw anatomy, a tightly fitting peg and cup of sorts, that can do wonders. When the shrimp slams the peg into the cup structure, it produces a tiny jet of water. This in turn generates, and I am not making this up, a super cavitating undersea bubble that in mere microseconds develops 5,000 degree temperatures, emits a flash of light, and then, as ocean pressure instantly squeezes the bubble back out of existence, what amounts to an underwater clap of thunder. When thousands of the shrimp are snapping, it sounds like popping popcorn, a hard rain, or as some have described it, frying bacon. The energy from these imploding bubbles can stun and even kill nearby prey. Just what the snapping shrimp need to see the undersea light of another day. Just a few more specifics on those sounds. The first one you heard was picked up from a hydrophone placed by the pier at Town Point Park in Norfolk, Virginia, by a team of PALS research performers from Northrop Grumman, Duke University, and the underwater technology firm Coda Octopus. The second sound clip was captured 6,000 miles away by a set of PALS performers from the Naval Underwater Warfare Center based in Newport, Rhode Island. In their case, the hydrophone was immersed in the whale-friendly waters by Hapuna, Hawaii. One more thing. You might be asking yourself why DARPA cares about all of these snapping shrimp snapping. Well, because it is possible to think of all those shrimpy snaps as zillions of sonar pings. Get a good enough understanding of how those pings bounce off of objects and get good enough at gathering and analyzing those echoes, and you just might be able to create a global partnership with snapping shrimp to improve maritime situational awareness about what is in the water, where things are in the water, and what they are doing. The next audio clip comes from an engineering research firm in New Hampshire working on a critical technology of interest to program manager Steve Comadina of the agency's Tactical Technology Office. What you need to know before you listen to the clip is that I had to slice and splice what was originally an 80-second clip into a much shorter version that you would be willing to listen to. The progression of tones provides you with a hint of what you are hearing. It's a bit jarring, so hang in there. What you heard in the clip is an experimental compact turbine generator system with the microphone approximately six feet from the test stand. You heard it increasing from a startup speed using an electric starter motor to a speed of over 60,000 revolutions per minute or RPMs. 
That's an astonishing rate of, are you sitting down a thousand revolutions per second? And its ultimate rotation speed will be over twice that. Novel and advanced propulsion systems, including ones for unmanned vehicles, intermittently are on DARPA's research menu. This potential component, a hybrid electric turbo alternator about the size of a washing machine's chamber, is being designed by engineers at Brayton Energy in Hampton, New Hampshire. At the fantastic rotation speeds it can achieve, the turbine's compressor develops enough pressure to support stable and extremely efficient combustion using a variety of fuels and then can start generating excess electrical power up to 35 kilowatts of power at 130,000 RPM. The technology is intended for multiple uses, among them ground and aerial hybrid electric vehicles for advanced manned and unmanned systems. According to the DARPA team interested in this research, the technology could be an enabler for small to medium hybrid electric aircraft platforms. Rather than developing propulsion itself, this turbine concept efficiently converts fuel combustion into electricity to run the vehicle's electric motors, which in turn can power fans or propellers. The electricity can also power sensors and other equipment. A turbo alternator like this can shift the design paradigm for aerospace designers by loosening restrictions on engine placement. The ability of the device to run on various fuels furthers this cause. I will close out this Sounds of Innovation episode with a trio of audio clips. They're from the so-called foundry of a Boston-based biotechnology research performer with a specialty in recasting bacterial cells into new and useful forms, analogous to the way a traditional foundry casts and recasts metal into useful shapes. Here's the second clip. Now for the final clip of the trio. That first sound, the one with a thrum to it, it comes from a centrifuge that Ginkgo Bioworks researchers use to concentrate bacterial cells into what they call pellets. These cell concentrates become the focus of other experiments and measurements, such as DNA analyses for determining which genes are correctly synthesized or assembled, or tests to see if an introduced gene leads to an expected activity. At its top speed in this audio clip, the centrifuge reached a spinning rate of about 4,200 revolutions per minute. The tube rack inside the centrifuge was well balanced. That's why the machine thrummed rather than make a racket the way a washing machine does when an unbalanced load of clothes enters the spin dry cycle. The second sound you heard comes from what Ginkgo folks refer to as an integrated work cell. It's a highly automated robotic workstation that in this case is preparing thousands of tiny wells in multi-well plates that are shaped a bit like miniaturized cupcake baking sheets. The machinery includes a robotic arm that retrieves multi-well plates from a holding station called a hotel and then shuttles them to other locations. At these locations, other automated machinery adds this or that liquid containing cells, culture media, or test chemicals. Other actions in the workstation include sealing and unsealing the well plates as needed and barcode labeling them so a computer can track each well's contents, conditions, and the procedures it has undergone or will undergo. This kind of automation is what makes it possible to screen thousands and even millions of samples in a reasonable amount of time. It's called HTS, or High Throughput Screening. Here's how Nate Tedford, Ginkgo's head of the foundry, explains the value of such systems for his HTS teams. So our HTS team, rather than setting up these plates by hand, used this robotic work cell to set up uh, many hundreds of plates, as you see in this, this hotel here, all tracked by barcode. And that way they can be fed to other instrumentation to run different kind of analytical tests. Uh, and so the idea here is that by 
doing everything robotically tracked by our custom software, we're able to know exactly what is in every plate and every well of that plate, uh, and then drive that logistics to run really complex workflows on other, other robotic platforms. The final sound clip of the Ginkgo BioWorks series comes from another robotic workstation. This one is preparing 108 96-well multi-well plates by adding cell-infused glycerol solutions into the wells that have been preloaded with a culture medium. The resulting 10,368 wells with specific bacterial cells growing under specific medium conditions will undergo specific measurements. The DARPA connection here is that Ginkgo BioWorks is under contract on a few of the agency's efforts. One is the ReVector program. Its goal is to engineer bacteria that can temporarily alter the microbial ecosystem or microbiome on a warfighter's skin. Another relevant collaboration between the company and DARPA is in the program known as SD2. That stands for Synergistic Discovery and Design. It's all about leveraging large data sets from high throughput experiments to develop data-driven models. These empirical approaches can accelerate scientific discovery and provide guidance for developing technology, especially for domains such as microbiomes, for which a full theoretical understanding is not yet in hand. Well, that's it for this episode of Sounds of Innovation. Thanks, listeners, for joining me. Thanks also to Tom Shortridge for his partnership in producing this program. For more information about the programs associated with the sounds you just heard, the program managers who run those programs, as well as other breakthrough technologies DARPA is working on, visit DARPA.mil. And for links that enable you to download this podcast, go to the Voices from DARPA page on DARPA's website.